Hello friends, in this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits and even ethnicity calculator results of a Neolithic Anatolian farmer from Barsin in Turkey. Uh, this individual's sample name is Bar31, his Y DNA is G2A and his mitochondrial lineage is X2M. Uh, if, in case you don't know where Barsin is, I can show you where it's located here on the map. Uh, it is in the northwest of Anatolia near the city of Istanbul. Let's go ahead and explore what this individual uh, Barson31 scores with my trade predictor. We're gonna start with Nashakot. So it looks like for Nashakot he's got uh, light brown eyes. He's got brown hair, actually very really interesting, brown hair instead of black hair. So his hair color was most likely uh, like the picture, like the fourth picture from the left and not the fifth. Uh, kind of interesting. So he's got brown hair. He's got lighter fair skin, and it looks like he's got wavy or curly or straight hair, but most likely wavy. The highest prediction here is the highest percentage here is wavy. Uh, curly and straight is also very possible. Kinky is pretty much out of the picture. There's no way he's got kinky hair. Uh, let's go ahead and check what kind of uh, genotypes contributed to the score. So it looks like he's got heterozygous genotype for blue eye haplotype 1. Uh, he's got this genotype, which is predictive of not having blue haplotype 1. He does not have blue haplotype 2. He's got heterozygous genotype in this variation of BH2, which is, I mean, really atypical because uh, this variation and this variation are very, very closely linked. So there is a dislinkage event that occurred here because he's got heterozygous genotype here, but homozygous uh, ancestral genotype in this variation, and they're like right next to each other. Uh, he's got this genotype, which leads to, uh, which is typically predictive of not having BH2. Once again, there's another dislinkage here, and he does not have BH3, no blue haplotype 3, no blue haplotype 4. Overall, he's quite dark. If you look at this uh, result, it's quite a dark uh, score for HERC2 and OCO2. I think if we look at his HERC2 and OCO2 eye color calculator, it's going to be dark or medium brown. And it seems to be light brown instead, yeah. So it looks like it's pretty much split between light brown and dark brown. So yeah, if you just take into account his OCO2 and HERC2 genotypes, he's definitely quite dark. We're going to go ahead and explore his uh, polygenic risk scores now. Actually, let's start with the ethnic calculator stuff. Yeah, so with the ethnic calculator, he's scoring closest to Newgrange 10 Neolithic farmer from Britain. Uh, Newgrange 10 Neolithic, farmers from, Neolithic farmer from Britain is indeed quite similar to Anatolian Neolithic farmers with tools like G25. This is, by the way, not G25. This is my own tool that I developed. Uh, my very own calculator, my very own oracle, everything made by me. Nobody else. So second place come Anato Iron Age Anatolians, third place global or amphora culture, uh, then the fourth place is this Iranian individual, it's just a single person from Iran. Uh, and Pinarbasi hunter gather from Anatolia actually comes at, it looks like, sixth place, so it's pretty distant. Alright, now let's go ahead and look at his polygenic risk scores. So it looks like for the polygenic risk scores he's scoring a below average score for schizophrenia, which is actually really typical for Anatolian Neolithic farmers. I noticed Pretty much all of them score below average for that. He's scoring below average score for diabetes and an above average score for Alzheimer's. We're going to explore why the score for Alzheimer's is the way it is. Uh, he's got an average score for multiple sclerosis, very typical. Free risk variance for breast cancer out of 24, pretty typical. 11 for uh, testicular cancer out of 24, also pretty typical. Two risk variance for celiac disease out of 12, also pretty typical. Zero risk variance for GSS out of 16, pretty typical. Uh, Gerstmann, Strausler, Scheidenker syndrome, I can't really pronounce it too much. And for Cro my tongue gets all uh, tired. For Crohn's disease, he's got 5 risk variance out of 24, which is also pretty typical. So it looks like just overall a typical result. The only thing we really want to examine is the Alzheimer's score to find out why it's two and a half, like basically 3 times higher than average. We're going to go ahead and explore that in a little bit. It looks like for the monogenic traits, he's got Wori or genotype in Compt and Wori or genotype in MAOA, so overall intermediate um, phenotype, so between Wori or and Wori or phenotypes, probably uh, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake and intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain. <coughs> it looks like he's got two no go learner variants, the RD2 Pro in Pro variation, which actually leads to less dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. Um, he does not have the A1 allele in TAC1, which is good, so. 
so he's got typical normal genotype in TAC1. Uh, just for reference, if you have the A allele here in this variation, it's kind of bad because it leads to 20% decrease of dopamine to receptor sites availability for every A allele. So you have two A's, that means you have 40% decrease, and it leads to stuff like ADHD, alcoholism, Parkinson's, various issues that come together with less dopamine to receptor sites activation. All right, and it looks like he's got short form 5 HTT LPR as well. Uh, just like most people, he's got short form 5 HTT LPR, slight uh, increase in the risk of depression, pretty typical result. For lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. If it took an ancestry test, it would say, hey, you're not lactose persistent, you're lactose intolerant. For OXTR, it looks like he's got two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy, very interesting to see. Uh, does not have type 1 diabetes, really interesting to see. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he does not have any risk variants for hemochromatosis, really interesting to see. <laughs> Uh, for Alzheimer's, okay, so his score for Alzheimer's was pretty high, and it's mostly because of this genotype where he's got two APOE2 alleles, right? It definitely uh, very uncommon genotype. Well, not, not so much uncommon, but it's a very important genotype. It has a big odds ratio. It has a big impact on your score. Uh, APOE is by far the most important gene when it comes to Alzheimer's prediction, but I would expect the result to actually be a little bit higher. So it looks like uh, these genotypes, which slightly decrease the odds of Alzheimer's, contributed to the result and made it a little bit more normal, a little bit more, um, uh, yeah, a little bit more, like, typical. Because if you just take this genotype, this genotype, it has an odds ratio of, like, 5, and he was scoring 2.8 something times the average, so uh, clearly something else here contributed to the score being more normal than it should have been. For multiple sclerosis, it looks like he doesn't have any risk variants for that, and he actually has this genotype, which is a rare genotype that protects from multiple sclerosis. Very good to see. Uh, he's got this genotype, which is really uncommon. I typically skip over the myopia section, but in this case, we have to talk about it, because the G allele here is really uncommon, and it's pretty much entirely only found in Europeans. You're not going to find people outside of Europe with the G allele here, and it leads to a much lower risk of myopia and greater quality of eyesight. So in this case, he's got two G alleles, very uncommon genotype. Uh, he's got no micro P, no micro P here either, really good to see. Uh, impaired muscle performance, likely more endurance athlete rather than strength for power athlete. He's got one fat gene variant in FTOs, RS99, 609, so he's got one variant for increased odds of obesity. Um, no variance for increased pain sensitivity, and it looks like he does not have any East Asian facial traits or in East Asian genetic traits in general. Uh, he doesn't have East Asian EDAR, and he does not have East Asian genotype for Asian flushing. He's not an Asian flusher, and he also does not have East Asian EDAR. All right. Uh, we're going to skip over the drug response. You can see lower odds of cannabis in this psychosis. That might be interesting to some people. For albinism in a typical traits panel, it looks like he is not a carrier for any of the albinism mutations, unlike the previous bar 8 sample. And he's not a carrier for, for Melanesian blonde hair variants. Very interesting to see. For familiar Mediterranean fever, it looks like he's got two risk variants for that. Uh, and familiar Mediterranean fever is most typical, most common in Mediterraneans. So it's kind of expected to see some risk variants for this illness, for this disease in Mediterranean people, such as Anatolian and Neolithic farmers. Uh, for MTHFR panel, he's got a typical good genotype pretty much everywhere, and this genotype, which is a common genotype that leads to slightly higher than average blood pressure. For cancers, nothing too interesting here. For leukemia, it looks like he's got average or common, common genotypes everywhere when it comes to leukemia. Um... Okay, so he's got, he, for rare diseases, he's got this genotype, which is really uncommon, and it leads to a significant reduction in the risk for certain autoimmune diseases. Really good to see. So, uh, this genotype is definitely quite uncommon. I'm seeing a lot of really good genotypes that protect from certain illnesses in these Anatolian and Neolithic farmers. <laughs> we're going to skip celiac disease, we're going to skip allergies. Crohn's, it looks like he does not have any risk variants in the important variations for Crohn's. For Canavan syndrome, he doesn't have any risk variants. Zero out of eight, so that's good to see. And for HIV and AIDS, this is something I've noticed with these Anatolian and Neolithic farmers, is that a lot of them have protective variants here and here, which protect against HIV turning into AIDS. So, um, that's interesting. I'm not sure what it is, why, why that is, why they have uh, these really, really uncommon genotypes at such a high frequency. Uh, I'm starting to think that maybe the presence of these protective alleles in Europeans 
and you know other people of the world might be connected somehow some way to uh, neolithic farmer admixture but i'm not sure it might be just just a really bold theory well that's pretty much all there is to it thanks for watching you can download this file on 23andme format from link in the description